don't forget, folks, Friday is Feed the Homeless Night. To help out, contact Monica Miller. Monica. Feels like I've been gone more than two weeks. I can't wait to get home and put my arms around Linus. Linus! I'm home! I really miss you, bud. About 42 inches. Victim is at least 100 pounder, I'm guessing. Loamy soil, a lot of aeration, and reliable water. Smart grower. What you got, Olivia? Pulpy liquid. The lab will tell us how long it's been here. Soil is the greatest. Tells us how things grow, to how things die. Missing. One giant pumpkin called Linus. You guys seen anything? Yeah, right. I'll be online tonight. Later. What's that? Pulpy liquid. We found it today, but others found it first. Others? Microbes. Ever since it hit the ground, microbes like bacteria and fungi have been feeding on it. Can I ask something? How does a microbe eat anyhow? There's no mouth. Good question. Microbes release enzymes into the soil that break down dead stuff into sugars and nutrients. Then, the microbes absorb it into their bodies. The question is, did this liquid hit the ground just because Linus was rotting? Or because Linus was stabbed before he disappeared? The lab will tell us. How? Well, the longer the liquid's on the ground, the more the microbes will have changed it. So they tell you the time of death. Yep. You're clever. So how did you find the remains? By accident. I was walking through the marsh to go crabbing. Good eye. And what do we have here? Looks like a wheelbarrow trail. Some different soil. Lighter color. I have a hunch. These seeds will tell us what happened to Linus. I'll take some soil samples from the marsh, too. pumpkin pulp? Yes. We can analyze the pulp to see how long it's been decomposing. The pulp is food for the microbes. The first compounds to be eaten are the sugars, the last are the fibers. What did the microbes tell you about Linus? We did a DNA analysis of the remains. Judging by the type of fungi found here, he's been there about two weeks. Same for the stuff by the truck. Wow, that's so cool. There's also a very suspicious white coating on some of these seeds. Look, this sample is fungal hyphae, a living organism. But this sample, it's not fungi. It's not even alive. What is it? I don't know. Have to run more tests. Up, oh, just in time. I've got the results of the soil from the wheelbarrow tracks. The darker soil is from the marsh. It's loaded with roots, some alive, some dead. What's missing is sand, silt, or clay. There's hardly any in marsh soil. It's mostly half-decomposed plants. Why only half-decomposed? It's the water. Dead plants pile up because the water keeps the oxygen from reaching the soil microbes. 
Some microbes can exist without oxygen, but they decompose dead things very slowly. Now, the lighter soil you found on the wheelbarrow tracks, that definitely couldn't have come from a marsh. Look. It's loaded with sand, silt, and clay. I also found fungi growing around the roots. Most tree roots have a beneficial fungi growing on them that supplies the tree with nitrogen, phosphorus, even water. Got to be forest soil. You know why we're in the forest, right? Sure. Well, the wheelbarrow carrying Linus got to the marsh. Some of the forest soil fell on the ground. Whoever took Linus might have left a clue here. What do you notice? I don't see a lot of dead plants like the marsh soil. Right. In upland forest soils, there's more oxygen and a whole world of critters that feed on dead plants and animals. Fallen leaves are colonized by microbes that feed on leaf tissue. The microbes become food for earthworms and other insects. Eventually, the tons of leaves and twigs that fall each year are reduced to a few tiny bits. Sounds like a feeding frenzy. Microbes eat dead plants. Animals eat microbes. Animals eat each other. I had no idea there was so much death and destruction in soil. Not just death, there's also lots of life. In a single square meter of garden soil, there are trillions of bacteria and fungi, billions of protozoa and nematodes, plus thousands of mites, springtails, insects, slugs, and snails. Not to mention a mammal or two. All in this tiny square? Yep, and it recycles nearly all the nutrients this forest needs to grow. Soils are the ultimate recycling bin. A circle of life. Your circle of life just left poop on my shoe. Oh, let me see. Oh, it's gross. To you, but to soil, it's nitrogen for green leaves and phosphorus for root growth. Okay, okay, but help me get it off my shoe. Folks, I've seen enough. It's time to confront our assailant. Already? Cool. Two weeks ago, Sophie went on a trip and left Linus 4 in the back of her pickup truck. Olivia's lab reports showed microbes in the fluid and pumpkin pulp were two weeks old. That means that whoever took Linus 4 did it two weeks ago. Dirt found down by the marsh turned out to be forest soil. Yeah, so who did it? The answer lies in the seeds. What'd you find on them, Olivia? A white substance, like flour. Uh, you I... stabbed Linus. A liquid hit the ground. Then you took Linus's remains in a wheelbarrow, sneaking through the forest. You hid the seeds and the pulp in the marsh, thinking no one would ever find them. Problem was, you left a substance on the seeds. A substance that turned out to be flour, just like what's on your apron now. I... Uh, uh, why? For pies. Pies? You and your stupid baking. You should talk. You and your stupid gardening. Who buries pumpkins? They should be pies. Never. It is the best way of putting nutrients back into my garden. You have an oven obsession. You would marry mulch. Yep. So how many pies did you get out of Linus? Fifty. Fifty! I'm serving them at the Feed the Homeless night. You can be proud of Linus. Friday is Feed the Homeless night. To help out, contact Monica Miller. Well, I guess it's all right. But next time, just ask, will you? Case closed. Right, Detective Clay? So, can we have pie now?